This is a natural science book from the Animal World series, Mountain Gorillas in Danger. It was written by Rita Ritchie, and all the photographs were taken by Michael Nichols. This book about the mountain gorillas being in danger is published by Gareth Stevens Children's Books in Milwaukee. If you live in Wisconsin, you probably know that the Milwaukee County Zoo has an exhibit of Western lowland gorillas and works um, with the Columbus Zoo uh, to keep the gorillas that are in captivity uh, healthy. There are also two other books in a series about the mountain gorillas, How Mountain Gorillas Live and Mountain Gorillas and Their Young. And if you're interested in studying primates, these might be titles for you to look for. The publisher has a note for people to read at the beginning of this book. It says, Today, the existence of the mountain gorilla is limited to one region on Earth, the rainforests of Central Africa's Virunga volcanoes. Through conservation efforts and educational programs, the mountain gorilla has a chance for continued survival. We hope that books like this one will help young readers appreciate the value of a species and the natural right uh, and its natural right to live alongside humankind. This is also the table of contents. So all of these topics are covered on these pages. So jobs for people, page 24. Uh, places to write if you want to influence decisions that affect the gorillas, page 31. Home in the mountains. Mountain gorillas live among the Virunga Mountains. These are six inactive volcanoes in Central Africa. Their steep slopes are covered with rainforests. Most days there are cool and damp, and it often rains. Mountain gorillas eat and sleep in the thick tangle of trees, plants, vines, and mosses. There are only about 400 mountain gorillas still alive. If people do not help, these unusual animals may die out forever. Parts of Zaire, which is now called the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Rwanda, and Uganda border the Virunga Volcano Range, which is home to mountain gorillas. Right about here is where they live. So part of that's in the Congo, part of it's in Uganda, and part of it's in Rwanda. The heather plant grows to a giant size in the mountain gorilla's rainforest home. This lake fills the crater of one of the inactive Virunga volcanoes. The streaks were made by the movement of stars during the long time it took to make this photograph. Quiet Gorillas Mountain gorillas have adapted to living in their high, cool mountains. They have thicker hair, shorter arms and legs, and a bigger chest than lowland gorillas. Gorillas, monkeys, and humans all belong to the primate group. Gorillas roam in family groups, eating leaves, the insides of tree branches, bamboo, wild celery, nettles, thistles, and other kinds of plants. The mountain gorillas have strong teeth and powerful arms. They can fight, but would rather live in peace. Hand size, foot size. A silverback's hand can be six inches wide. A human male's hand is only about half that size. A silverback's foot can be 12 inches long and is much wider than a human male's foot. Despite their fierce appearance, these gorillas just want to live their lives in peace. Gorillas become threatening only when protecting themselves or their families. Wild celery grows to eight feet tall. It tastes bitter, but gorillas enjoy eating it after they peel it. Gorillas in Danger Mountain gorillas face dangers from nature, humans, and other gorillas. 
Because mountain gorillas must grow for years before they can become parents, the group will die out if too many adult gorillas die. A female is eight years old before she can mate and have a baby. A male is about 12 years old before he can mate. At this age, he becomes a silverback with white hair on his back. The gorilla infant remains close to his mother during the first few years of life. He's always within an arm's reach. Silverbacks are twice as big as female adult gorillas. These males weigh about 375 pounds, 170 K. Females weigh about 200 pounds, 90 kilos. This youngster is not old enough yet to help defend the family from harm. Danger in nature. Gorilla family groups grow very slowly, but they can be destroyed very quickly. A gorilla baby grows inside its mother for nine months before being born. The female will not have another baby for three or four years. But if her infant dies, she will have another baby much sooner. About half the infants die before they are a year old. They have accidents or get diseases and worms that make them weak. Even adults can get sick. Soon, this baby will be strong enough to ride on its mother's back. The mother of this baby is always watching to see that it doesn't hurt itself. Gorilla growth. Female gorillas are usually pregnant or nursing their young. Females cannot become pregnant while their infants are nursing. And since infants nurse for about three years, the gorilla family group grows very slowly. Danger from farmers. People have turned much of the mountain forests into farms, so there is less land and less food for the gorillas. When mountain gorillas eat the farm crops, the farmers try to kill them. Some people graze their cattle in the gorilla forests. The cattle eat the gorilla's food, dirty their land, and tear up the earth with their hooves. Cattle ruin the land for gorillas. Farmland seen through the trees. Much of the mountain gorilla's forest has been cleared of trees so people can grow crops. Here a boy of the Hutu tribe cares for his cattle. The Hutu people, one of three main tribes in Rwanda, use the rainforest to graze livestock. Danger from poachers. Hunting is not allowed in the Virunga gorilla forests, but some hunters, called poachers, kill adult gorillas so they can sell their infants to a zoo or to a collector. These gorilla infants usually die later. Poachers also set traps for other animals, such as buffalo and antelope. Gorillas get caught in these traps. Trying to break free, they may lose a hand or a foot. Later, if their wounds get infected, they might die. The injured hand of a female gorilla. She caught it in a snare when she was young. This silverback's fingers were cut off by a poacher's snare. He survived, but many injured gorillas die when their wounds become infected. This is a wire snare. Poachers hide traps in the grasses of the forest to trap antelope or buffalo. Gorillas are often caught instead. Danger from new leaders. The silverback is the leader of his family. He keeps order and protects his family from enemies. If he is killed, another silverback may take over the family. When gorillas are left alone, the new leader will care for the family. But if they are threatened, the new silverback may kill all the infants. This makes the females mate with him right away and bear his babies. Danger makes the silverback want his own babies quickly. Here's a silverback and a juvenile or a young gorilla. In raising their young, adult gorillas normally strengthen family ties. 
But when faced with constant danger, an adult male gorilla may try to kill the infants. Then the females will mate with him and he can have babies of his own. A new silverback leader right here in this photo. The silverback must be a strong leader so he can look after his group. How people can help. One way to help mountain gorillas is to tell people about them. Many villagers living in the Virungas have never seen a gorilla. But photographers have made movies of these animals. They show these movies in the villages. Now the people can learn that gorillas right close to them need to be protected. Teachers take children into the mountains to see the gorillas. Then the children's parents become interested in helping save the gorillas too. Thousands of villagers come to see movies about their gorilla neighbors. When they learn about them, they want to help save them. Villagers in Zaire, now called the Democratic Republic of the Congo, are beginning to respect the gorillas. The animal is becoming a national symbol. This photo shows a Hutu boy with a drawing of tourists photographing the gorillas. He has seen the gentle beasts himself. Patrolling the Virungas. Many guards now patrol the Virunga gorilla forests. They look for traps and snares set by poachers. They pull these apart and set free any animals that may be caught in them. Sadly, many of these animals die before they are found. The guards arrest the poachers they catch and send them to jail. The guards also drive out the cattle that graze in the forest. They make the cattle herders pay a big fine. This man is one of many hired to patrol the parks where the gorillas live. He watches for poachers and their traps. This antelope is already dead, but when the guards find a live trapped animal, they turn it loose. This is a buffalo snare that poachers bury in mud holes. They connect their snares to logs, which catch in the trees and keep, keep the trapped buffalo from moving on. Farmers helping. Farmers in the Virungas need more land. They want to clear away the forests and grow crops, but without the forests, the crops would soon fail. The roots of the forest plants hold the soil in place. Rain soaks into the soil and runs into many streams that water the farms farther away. Even in the dry periods, there is water for crops and people. To keep getting enough water, farmers must help save the gorilla forests. These trees on the Virunga slopes keep the soil in place. The soil stores the water needed by the wild plants and the crops that feed gorillas and farmers alike. Potatoes are a main crop of the Hutu tribe. These potatoes grow where gorillas once foraged. Jobs for people. Working to save the gorillas provides jobs and money for the local people. Many people earn money selling supplies or working in the gorilla forests. Guards keep cattle and poachers away from the gorillas. Trackers find snares and traps. Porters carry loads and do other camp work. Guides take small groups of tourists into the forests to see the gorillas. But tourists can be a danger too because they can pass on diseases to the gorillas. Visiting groups are kept small to keep from alarming the gorillas. Tourists travel a long way into the gorilla forest. They must take their food supply with them. Hired porters often help carry the load. And if you live in Mozambique or South Africa or the Cameroon, you know that porters like this are very skilled at carrying things on their heads. These visitors in the photograph traveled thousands of miles just to see the gorillas. Studying gorillas. Many scientists now study the mountain gorillas 
and how they fit into their habitat. Experts are also learning more about the plants and other animals of the rainforest that surround the gorillas. Some of their discoveries may help humans. Because gorillas and humans are primates, knowing about gorillas can help us understand more about people. We may find out how humans form into different kinds of groups. We can learn about how people act in these groups. Through long, complete studies, scientists have discovered that gorillas have a mothering and caring family bond, very much like a human family. In this photograph, a human researcher studies a gorilla. And the gorilla seems to be studying the human right back. More gorillas. The Virunga gorilla forests lie in three connecting parks. These parks are in the countries of Rwanda, the Congo, and Uganda. Nearly all of Uganda's mountain gorillas live in the impenetrable forests nearby. In these four parks, the mountain gorillas and their habitat are protected. Many people still want to use the gorilla forests for farming, logging, hunting, and grazing cattle. Others see the need to protect the gorilla's home. Because of their efforts, the number of mountain gorillas is slowly getting larger. In this background photograph, one can see giant lobella plants. They stand 10 feet tall. Gorillas use their leafy tops for nesting material and food. And in this inset photograph, we can see that scientists have opened the world's eyes to the needs of mountain gorillas. Their future depends on us. Some more gorilla facts. The Virunga mountain range where gorillas live in Africa is an area only 40 miles long and up to 6 to 12 miles wide. The impenetrable forest, the other home of mountain gorillas, is even smaller. Gorillas walk on all fours. They clench their hands into fists as they go along. This is called knuckle walking. A mother with a new infant carries it cradled in one arm using the other for knuckle walking. When a gorilla feels threatened, it will rear on its hind legs. Full-grown male gorillas can stand six feet tall. Gorillas are among our closest living relatives. These animals have many things in common with humans. In fact, gorillas and humans are so much alike that gorillas can catch colds from human beings. Only chimpanzees are even more closely related to human beings. A grown-up or an older sister or brother can help you on this page. There's a list of more books you can look for in the library or at the bookstore. There are places you can write to get information about the mountain gorillas. And there's a glossary, some of the words that come up in this story, like graze and habitat and poacher and rainforest. This is the continuation of the glossary. And because this is a natural science book, at the back there's an index. And if you're saying, where did they uh, explain um, about silverbacks? Well, if you look that up here, it tells you to look here. And on all these pages, 7, 8, 15, 16, 17, if you go back, you can find information about silverbacks. Or if you want to know about the Hutu tribe, the index helps you by giving you pages 13, 19, and 23 to go back to. If you wish to get some of the most up-to-date information about mountain gorillas and how they're doing today, this would be a great place for you to go. The African Wildlife Foundation exists to help the most endangered species on the continent of Africa. And they report that instead of 400, there are now more than 1,000 mountain gorillas that remain today. And it is, according to the AWF, the only great ape with increasing population. Nonetheless, the mountain gorilla is still an endangered species and in need of help from people like you. 
This book has been Mountain Gorillas in Danger. It was written by Rita Ritchie. The photographs were taken by Michael Nichols.